Uh, good afternoon, everyone. One of the things I forgot to mention on on uh, Saturday after the game, um, uh, can't thank our fans enough for coming out. That was a, a really good K-State crowd and, and was an impact in that second half. And uh, after the game, I really noticed it. And I w wish I would have thanked uh, the crew uh, right then at the press conference after the game. But uh, uh, great job by our fans of coming out and supporting our guys down in New Orleans. Uh, a couple things. Going back and watching it, the, watching the film, uh, the obvious thing is we need to be better in all three phases. Um, we know that um, there's some things that uh, we've got to shore up uh, in specific areas on both sides and on teams. In the same respect, I don't want to disrespect what I believe and know that Tulane is a really good football team. When you watch them on tape, quarterback, wide receivers, uh, offensive line were really talented. And they tackled really well. They they really hit you, uh, and did a good job. And so uh, I, I, that would be terrible for me to say or anybody to say, boy, you guys don't look very good. We beat a good football team. And one thing I know that I learned that I wasn't sure of is we have really good leadership, and our culture won that game with those older kids um, and leaders in particular stepping up at halftime when it wasn't looking good and finding a way uh, to keep believing. And, and so I'm excited about the win. Uh, I, I know you guys also watched a lot of other games Saturday. It's hard to win in college football. You better be happy when you get wins, um, and we are. But in the same respect, we know we've got a lot of work to do, and unfortunately it's a short week, so we've got a lot of stuff to get done. Those types of games where you fight through adversity and prevail, are those the types where you can – grow from and improve from the most? Yeah, you hope so, mainly because there's a lot of guys that haven't been in Big 12 action uh, or college football action where we're going to play in a ton of one-score games. I mean, that's what this league is. It's a bunch of one-score games. So you better find ways to win as opposed to, uh, shoot, we can't get over the hump on those games. Uh, and so, yeah, I hope we do. You know, you, you, you're excited about the win. And when you peel things back like we did yesterday, because we were able to see the guys yesterday and say, okay, we have to do better there, there, and there. They maybe exposed us here and here because of whatever, and we've got to shore those things up. Have you been able to kind of locate a common difference between the first half and second half so far? Um, not, not, not pinpointed, no. Um, the simple thing is we're executing better in the second half. Bottom line, uh, on offense, we're executing uh, way better. Um, got to get better drive starters. Uh, we got to execute better on our drive starters. And you know, we have we have too many three and outs right now, uh, and we got to flip that script. But on on the on the other side of that thing, might be as poor as we can play on defense um, and still win a football game because we only had two three and outs, and those guys had the ball so much that it wasn't fair. We didn't give our offense enough opportunities. I thought Keegan Johnson was pretty productive, both on the stat sheet and not on the stat sheet. Could this be a launching point for him? Hopefully it is. Uh, he had a lot of confidence and um, and played really well, made some big-time plays, catches, made a couple big-time blocks, and uh, w without a doubt, that was good to see. Through uh, two games, you've had some explosive plays in the passing game but not many with the wide receivers. What are your thoughts on that, and how can you get them more involved? Yeah, we, we've got to continue to spread things out, and, and the run game opens up some of those passing pass game. You know, The big play to Keegan was huge for us, and, and hopefully uh, that will either give us some confidence or um, maybe not give as many people opportunities to play some press coverage because that was a huge play at the time. I don't know it was a 30, 40-yard gain. Um, when we had to have it, um, and then uh, we, you know, we've big pass plays, but some to the tight ends, some to the running. I mean, DJ's at fourth and one pass play was as good a pass play as you're going to get under pressure, uh, buying time and finding DJ down the sideline. So, um, all, all in all, we know we've got to improve. Uh, you're not the one who makes the schedule, but what are your thoughts about playing on Friday? Um, once again. Uh, so I can go see Colby play at K-Dub. I'm ecstatic about playing on Friday night. But that's a dad talking. Um, it's hard when you have a road game like we had uh, to come back. And did, we were fortunate. We all know it. You, you guys that were down there, you guys were lucky as well that the sun wasn't popped out and it was 105 degrees. We, we, all, we all are grateful for that. It was still really humid. 
um, and it was really hot, and it took a lot out of our guys. To ask them to go and, and practice yesterday was really difficult. We got some things done, and so you know you're on a short week. We're fortunate we're at home, but we're on a short week, and so um, I just know this uh, with the expanded Big 12. I think we all know it's going to be a big part of what we do on Friday nights. So once again, I, I'm okay with it, but as a dad, I love it. I also wanted to ask about Arizona's top receiver. Is he about as, as good as you've seen? Yeah, he's phenomenal. Uh, you know, you watch him last year make plays, uh, and then the first game against New Mexico, um, he exploit every time they had a chance to go with him one on one, and, and those two are in sync. The quarterback and wide receiver uh, are as in tune and have as good a chemistry as any two people that I've faced as far as a wide receiver tight uh, quarterback combination. Going back to to Friday, um, it'll be under the lights. Friday night, obviously. Um, just how daunting is Bill Snyder Family Stadium at night? Um, well, you'd have to tell me that. You'd t probably tell me somebody tell us our record at night, and I say it's daunting, and then it's not. I don't know. I, I know we've got a great home environment. Whatever, whatever it is, a afternoon, eleven a.m., six o'clock, seven o'clock. Um, our, our fan base is so good; they're gonna. Um, to probably enjoy themselves in the tailgate lot quite a bit on Friday during the day. Uh, and uh, it'll be a fun environment for sure. You talked after the game about still trying to find the identity for you guys on both sides of the ball. Is that something that can only be done through game reps, or yeah. can that can that be found in practice? Yeah, no, well? no, it's going to be done through game reps, but in the same respect as it's done through game reps, you got to put your guys in position to be successful of what you think they can do. It doesn't help us to say we're going to um, practice all of our gap scheme run game and then just run zone scheme in, in, in the game. Um, we've got to try to practice against good people. That's the starters against good on good to see what that identity is. And then the other thing is getting the guys to whatever that identity is, is to believe in it. That whether we're a man team, zone team on defense to a gap scheme, zone team uh, on offense in the run game, whatever they may be, of getting the guys to believe in it and buy into it and say, this is what we're going to do. Obviously, lots of things are still growing, but the fact that the pass rush has, has kind of been what you guys wanted through this first two games, how, how huge has that been? Yeah, it's been really big. Uh, one of the stats that probably was a little um, – no, probably didn't get talked about enough is we didn't give up a sack. I thought they got good pass rush on us, but we didn't give up a sack. And I think that's a credit to Avery um, because he is very elusive and very hard to sack back there. And then the same respect, we got five sacks and numerous pressures. Um, and it's fun because there's a lot of guys uh, on the defensive line that are that uh, are, are making plays. And, and that's we talked about the defensive line in general being a strength, and it sure was from a pass rush standpoint so far. Coach, through two games, Dylan Edwards has 12 touches, three touchdowns, average almost 10 yards a touch. Uh, is this small usage sample, uh, lack of familiarity with the playbook, or something else going no, on? No, I think it's a combination of a couple things. Um, one, we need to find ways to get him to football more. That's, that's, that's a pretty simple um, concept that, that I've challenged or addressed um, with our offensive guys. The second part of it is we are not on the field enough offensively. And last week was more the defense's fault that we were on the field for 55 plays. Typically, we're on the field for 70, 75 plays. The first two games, we've been at 55. And the first game was basically 40 because Dylan didn't play or starters didn't play the last 15 plays. So we've got to get more plays because I'd like to see – Avery with the ball more in his hands. I'd like to see Dylan with the ball more in his hands. I'd like to see what you guys would like to see. Let's get the ball downfield to our wide receivers. Well, our sample size is so small and the fact that we've had 55 plays in the first two games and the first game we had basically 40 because we had our backups. And we've got to get drive started so that we can get 70, 75 plays. And then we've got to get off the field on, on defense. So um, all the things that you guys uh, are wondering, asking, Guys, we're, I'm asking and, and talking about the same things uh, upstairs. Uh, whether it's we've got to, we've got to clean up our, our pass coverage. It was it was not very good on on Saturday. It's got to get cleaned up. If it doesn't get cleaned up, 
doesn't matter what's going to happen. Then we can run the ball for 400 yards. We're not going to win any games because we're giving up explosive plays. We've got to find a way to get the playmakers the ball in their hand. But we've got to have the guys on the field to do it. Uh, and we've got to be on the field. So we've got some things uh, through two games – and I told the guys, it's whatever after the game, September 7th, um, hang in there, man. We're figuring things out uh, on both sides and on teams. We're, we're going to have an opportunity to make some plays. Their kicker was really good. We had one opportunity for a kick return, and we didn't block it right. We had a seam. Every other kick, I think he banged it out of the end zone. Those are opportunities. Their punter was really good. I thought Dylan did a phenomenal job handling the football on punts but we didn't get anything going because they did a really good job in the kicking game. So all those things, guys, uh, are a combination of us not having opportunities, and we've got to create more opportunities. That's on us as coaches. Exactly, chart plays, but it, it would seem after two games, Avery's a lot more comfortable outside of the pocket, throwing on the run, doing unconventional things, and actually standing in the pocket. Is there any reality to that? Well, some of it is forced. <laughs> You know, some of it is forced because we're, we're we're giving up some leakage and some penetration that we we got to shore up as well. No difference than than a, what we're doing uh, talking about on defense. We've got to shore up our our um, uh, pass protection. But been really pleased. I mean, the play he made to Oakley one time, getting out on a third and five early in the game was really good. And then the the touchdown throw and the catch by Swanee. Um, was huge as as well as the throw to to, to DJ and what excites me uh, about those three plays in particular is maybe in the past or maybe somebody'd say why isn't he just taking off and running? Well, I love it that his eyes are downfield. I love it that he's keeping plays alive rather than just saying first read not there I'm gone. Man, it's an evolution and he's evolving. And I talked to him yesterday. I thought he got better and better, and I think he's getting more and more comfortable uh, as a quarterback playing every down. And I'm excited because um, the kid's a, a competitor, he's a winner, and, and he loves the challenge of, okay, now I, I've got to continue to improve. And I see that on a, on a play-by-play basis, and now we've got two starts under his belt this year. And so I'm excited about, uh, A, getting the win and seeing all of our guys continue to improve. One final thing. Um, <clears throat> Avery at times almost looks timid running. Has he been told about the injury thing or nope? I mean, he just you could ask him about it. Nobody said anything to him. Nope, nobody said anything to him. Um, you know, and now I, I would tell you, and I hope he would say, hey, if it's in the first quarter, I got to get my my tail going and, and and make sure I don't take those some unnecessary hits. If it's in the third or fourth quarter, man, I may have to stick it in there and go. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many of those opportunities that, that he had. I would tell you that I, I thought Tulane did a nice job of making sure that you're going to give the football. You're going to give the football. And he's making the correct reads. And so, once again, sample size of plays needs to, needs to get a bigger sample size for us. What have you seen from Austin Romaine these first couple of games this year? Uh, a kid that uh, – Played as a true freshman and um, was kind of out there learning what he was doing and, and studied in the off offseason. Uh, hung around Austin more and learned a lot about how you study and is playing uh, really at an all-conference level and is a terrific linebacker, becoming a great communicator, and uh, our kids really trust him out there. He's playing really high level. It's been a tale of two games for Arizona so far this year, but – where, where would you say their defense, the threats from their defense and where they're at? Well, right I think they're really good up front for starters. I think they've got really disruptive guys uh, up front. Uh, and then they have a bunch of experience at linebacker and at safety. Um, there's a lot of guys that, you know, you watch the, uh, the the bowl game with OU and there's a lot of guys that are that's still the same jersey numbers or the same players out there. Um, so they've got a lot of experience back on defense. Uh, I like their scheme. They're really talented, and they and they and they run their scheme really well. Um, they they stunt and move up front, so they're not giving you easy targets in the run game. Um, but uh, I think they're really well coached, and, and they play fast. Does playing Arizona as a non-conference game affect how you view it at all? Um, well, because you know you kind of forget that they just joined the league. 
<laughs> you know, I still see it as a non-conference game. If you told us we were playing Baylor in a non-conference, I'd say that sounds weird to us. Um, I, we're all still figuring this out. I mean, yes, it, it is it is fun to have two Big 12 teams that weren't on the schedule. I'm telling you, this is the way it should be, and I'm not going to win that thing. But we need to play 10 conference games or eight conference games. This nine playing five on the on the road and four at home it doesn't make any sense to me. We need to be able to play 10, uh, and everybody should play 10, and it would be uh, have a lot more parity. The two games, how how, how do you how would you evaluate what Simon has done punt wise? Um, Simon was much better on Saturday than he was the week before, uh, and uh, first game at home. Crazy crowd, um, maybe a little bit nervous, uh, and really settled in this week. He had one punt with the wind, and I don't know what it was, but he hit it pretty good. And then he had these; his other punts were against the wind. First one wasn't his best, and then he got into a rhythm. And uh, that's a that's a, a a really young player that uh, I'm excited about because he's got a bright bright future, and the future's now for him. And so I'm pleased with Simon. The other thing is, and nobody realizes this, uh, Chris Tennant's kicking the ball really well. Who's the holder? Simon. That's, that's big time. I mean, Jack Bloomer was as good as there was. Before that, Devin Anktel was as good as there was. And we've had two guys for a long time here. And now Simon is taking on that role and doing a heck of a job. And so I'm pleased with him. Coach, I was going to actually ask about Chris Tennant. Uh, you know, you – He's hit them from distance as well this year, and you know I think you guys trusted him at the end of the half to to try and kick that 50 yarder. Yeah. Uh, what has what's changed from last year to this year for him? And yeah, has it been more of a process thing to get uh, him back I, to that level? A lot of it's mindset and and, and mental with the kickers. That wasn't um, we were kind of caught there. It was too far of a field goal into that wind, um, but uh, we thought we had a better chance there than than throwing the hail mary. To be honest with you. Uh, and so that probably wasn't – that's my fault. That's not on Chris. Uh, but he's been very confident, and we've put him in a lot of those situations in practice where, man, we're just going to blow it and say, hey, you know what, we're going to kick it, and it's 45-yarder, and he's drilled him. So he's just kicking with a ton of confidence. And uh, I, I know that's a big thing for kickers is having that confidence. And uh, it's fun to see him in his last year uh, get off to a great start. The offense to have a kicker like that. That it, it helps, so um, but you know, I'm a big believer. Field goals are not going to beat you. You got to get touchdowns. And one of the things that was a huge thing in a game that um, wasn't good at halftime is that it had every right to be 28 to 10 Tulane at halftime, but our defense got two big stops and forced them into field goals uh, that they had six points rather than 14, and so. That was an indication of field goals aren't going to beat you. If you you got to bow up sometimes. So and that's, we were going to go for it on the fourth down, when we had third and two at about the five or six when it was twenty to ten and we lost three or four yards on it to get to a fourth and long. So we end up kicking the field goal because you got to get touchdowns once you get down there. Yeah, just wondered about you talked about the pass coverage. Is there any like common denominator or something? Get your uh, eyes right. That's the huge thing, Arnie. We 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 lost our eyes, and Coach Klanderman's as good as there is uh, as a secondary coach, and he'll get it fixed, and and we'll help him get it fixed. But you cannot lose your eyes, and we were playing some combinations of man and some combinations of zone, or man on one side and zone on the other side, and we lost our eyes, and. You lose your eyes against a terrific quarterback like this young kid was as a thrower and wide out second roll, you're going to pay for it. And they made us pay every time. So hats off to those guys at Tulane, and we've got to get it corrected. I was just going to ask a little bit about how you felt about with uh, Andrew and, and Pastore and the job they did in the second yeah, half. Yeah, they did a really nice job. You know, we talked about having – uh, a, a true seven seven guy rotation, and then really Cap could be the eighth, but it's hard to move in a center all the time. And so we lost Carver and, and Hadley, uh, and Carver came back, Hadley did not. 
Um, and those two guys came in and did a really nice job. i am been a big fan of both those guys, and they're, they're good enough to be starters here, and we consider them starters. Um, I don't have the, the timetable on Carver or Hadley. I don't know if they'll be available or not. Uh, they didn't do anything yesterday, obviously, uh, and it's going to be a short week, so we'll have to figure that out. But uh, I, I'm, we are all, as an offense, comfortable if, uh, if it's going to be Liney and Pastore. They're experienced guys. You know what? I, I can't even go there because it's not our choice. It's the league and it's TV, and uh, that's that's honestly what pays the bills. Uh, everybody knows that. I know it, it. It's not great for the high schools. I get that, but it's not anybody's choice, and it's it's what television contracts are. And television contracts run run the business. I think everybody knows that. And once again, I'm going to be in Salina on Saturday. <laughs> By well, the way. You want, I, no, I, I got a spot town, for you. Yeah. Um, back to the defensive thing. It, to me, it looked like on occasions most of the guys were in man and someone was playing zone or vice versa. Did that go on that much? Um, went on one time on the touchdown uh, that they had um, when we had a blitz going. Everybody was in man. One kid was in zone. But the other ones, we we honestly lost our eyes, and that was one of the reasons at halftime we cranked up the heat and said, you know what, we're not going to have you let you sit back there that long. We, we've got to get pressure, and that's that helped us for sure. Um, and once again, their wideouts were really good, but we, we've got to be better with our eyes. Granted, it's the second week of the season. you got a lot of new guys out there. Offensively, though, was there just enough of missing assignments, missing a block, not going to the right details. place? Details. Just I mean, broke it down? Just details. You know, whether what well, you're right. Um, a, a combination of all those things, and that's why you're fortunate to get out of there with a win. But make no mistake, at the even in the locker room at the end of the game, man, we celebrated, and then we went right to it. And I said, I want coaches in here. Guys, we got to fix this. We, we all have to fix. It starts with me, but we all have to fix this. We've got to coach you better. We've got to buy into the coaching better. We've got to detail things better. We can't lose our eyes wherever it be on defense. We've got to know our assignment. Um, and some of that is inexperience. We all know that because we had some kids that are playing their first games. And so if it is, then it's our job as coaches to say, if they can't handle that much, then we got to simplify some things. And if they can handle it, then we've got to detail it better um, because – uh, we know we've got to play better. And once again, Tulane's a really good football team. Take nothing away from that because they, they whipped us in that first half. We, we've got to do a lot of things better on all th in all three phases. Guys, I'm smart enough to realize that. We've got to be better. I, I know we've got to be better. Um, and we're not looking at it saying, hey, we've got to win. Hey, no, everything's great. It's not great. We've got to improve. Working on a story here, and I think it's important when Fox comes to town, there's going to be a window on Kansas State University. You're the front porch of Kansas State University. I'm, I'm just wondering if you might be able to paint a picture for me of the synergy between the community, the student body, and the love yeah. affair with the football team. A couple things. Um, one, let's go to the student body and let's go to the band with Dr. Trace. We get home at 7.45, and it's packed out in front of an ear for our guys coming off that bus. And for the new guys, transfers, freshmen, the first road trip, and you got the whole band playing the fight song, playing the Wabashers, we're coming in. That doesn't happen in a lot of places in college football. Now let's go to Friday night, and I hope Fox goes out in the tailgate lots and sees, man, this is important. And that's what we tell recruits all the time. You want to go to a place where football is important. And you go out in those tailgate lots, you, you have a crew out there when those buses come up, and it is electric, and it sends chills down your spine to see the enthusiasm and passion for what college football is. Then you go into the bill. We open up for, for pregame, and the, and the students are there, the band's there. It doesn't get any better than that. And that's why a lot of kids 
either come or choose to stay is because football is really important with our students, with our community, with our state, and with our region.